So, the Call of Disappointment Modern Warfare 2 beta is out and I've tried it for a few hours and decided to share my point of view with you. I've actually got a video regarding the general issues of the new Modern Warfare reboot in the works, but I figured I could just do two individual videos for each topic. Most of the gameplay you see in the background was pulled from my streams on Twitch, so please excuse the quality. So, just to be clear where I'm coming from. My favorite Call of Duties are Modern Warfare 1 to 3, the old ones of course, in which I've spent well above 2000 hours combined. I've also played Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, World War 2, Black Ops Cold War and of course, the queen of wasted potential, the Modern Warfare reboot. I describe my style of playing as fast paced, or at least I try it to be, and I wholeheartedly believe that camping is not only boring as fuck, but also the complete antithesis to what Call of Duty is, run and gun. If 12 people just sat still and didn't move, there would be no game. As simple as that. Besides that, I always equip my weapons to have high ADS speed and usually, when playing snipers, I only quickscope. <laughs> okay. Ah, ich dreck schon, eine gute Aufnahme fürs, fürs Video. So, the beta. It's... Eh. Let's start with the good things. The game looks great. I think they've done quite a lot of work on the lighting engine and I like the clear natural lighting on many maps. I haven't seen a ray tracing option yet, not that I care, but there are actually quite a few instances where the lighting does some really nice looking stuff even without ray tracing. The textures are very high res and while it's not battlefield levels of destruction, bullet holes and broken walls seem to stay throughout the round which gives the maps a cool played in look. The sound is really good, the guns sound heavy and bassy, which I like, and the devs deemed it necessary to promote the fact that they've recorded most of the gun sounds on a real shooting range, which I thought they'd done since day one, but well. Steps are well audible, nades give you shell shock and the music is good. I actually really enjoy the old Modern Warfare soundtracks, especially the ones by Hans Zimmer of course, but Sauer Schachner did an amazing job of capturing and modernizing them for the Modern Warfare reboot. I don't actually know if she's also the composer for Modern Warfare 2, but I've heard a few of her tracks in the beta, so my hopes are high. The menus are okay-ish, though there are some really stupid design choices like the fact that some guns in your progression window block other buttons or that cringy camera pan shortly before the map loads. Speaking of maps, they are actually not that bad. There are 4 TDM maps and they are medium to large in my opinion. There's a bit more verticality and open pathways and higher floors, which is really cool and refreshing. They are nothing special, but there's one thing they all have in common, except maybe for the museum. A whole bunch of nooks and crannies, walls, holes and corners to hide in, on, behind or under. This was done for a very specific reason, which is also the main issue I have with this game. It is designed for campers. Modern Warfare already had its fair share of incredibly annoying mechanics to make you an easy target for people who can't shoot in a video game or for campers. Incidentally, they are the same group of people. Stun grenades just stick you to wherever you are so you can't see, hear, run or defend yourself. Oh, you nearly missed your shot there, little Simmy, and only got a hit marker? No problem, we won't let the bad guy get away. See, you shot him with Dragon's Breath, which gives him quite a bit of damage well after you shot him. So you don't even have to work for your kills. Ain't that something? And everything in Modern Warfare 2 screams, go camp and get your mom's credit card. I can't say too much about the weapons yet because my choices are very limited, but knowing Modern Warfare, the launchers and shotguns will be incredibly overpowered. I actually like the fact that the M4 especially, but I assume ARs in general, seem to pack more of a punch and are becoming a viable option again, even for faster playstyles. Some of the tactical gear, which includes wall penetrating grenades called drill charges and a free Bioshock upgrade for your player model, take up to 3 hits to get rid of. Claymores and others don't, but usually they are angled in a way that you can't really shoot them without also being in the blast radius. Well, you say, just use Spotter to hack them. Ah, you sweet summer child. Spotter doesn't hack Claymores and other gear anymore, at least not when I tried. Don't forget that I may be wrong about all of this because I'm too stupid to use my perks properly, but you need a field upgrade for that now. 
Oh, and Swatter is also not a constant perk anymore, as you now gain additional perks during the round like Specialist. There are two base perks, which are completely useless shit, except for Scavenger, which is a great perk for when you are high on a kill streak, but it's almost useless as a base perk. The second tier includes Cold Blooded, Fast Hands, Spotter and others, and the last tier contains High Alert, Ghost and others. And especially Ghost is bitterly missed as a base perk, or as it always has been, a normal perk. Now, don't get me wrong. Revamping the perk system is a good idea and a much needed refresher for the old recipe, but doing it this way just has a teeny tiny hint of doing it just for the campers. There's no real way of playing a quiet, fast-paced style anymore. You can't hack with Spotter, which you don't even necessarily have at any given time, so you need DDoS, which is a field upgrade. Using DDoS takes away Dead Silence, which by the way should be a permanent perk in general. So now you can destroy enemy equipment, but only in a specific radius and only every whatever minutes. Also, you need to be close to the enemy's equipment to DDoS it, but you can't be quiet while doing so, because you can't use Dead Silence. So, if you want to get rid of a camper's 25 claymores, batties and trophies, you're either loud or you can't do it without shooting at it, which is difficult in many situations. On top of that, as I said, you maybe don't even have spotter yet, and even if you do, you may not have ghost, which makes you visible to enemy UAVs even when you try to sneak up on them using dead silence. See the problem? Und warum holt der einen Knopf raus, um Dead Silence zu aktivieren, sodass du für einen kurzen Moment nicht vernünftig aimen kannst? Es ist eh schon nur auf Zeit, was eh schon beschissen ist. Und dann machen sie es auch noch so, dass du einen Aim-Nachteil hast, wenn du es aktivierst. Now, let's say there's a camper who doesn't use claymores and stuff. Surely you'll be able to spot them on a minimap because of the red dots while they're shooting at your mates, right? No, the minimap doesn't show red dots anymore when players shoot. This highly benefits campers. If anyone has anything good to say about this change, please go ahead, put it in the comment section. I won't read it. But another totally useful feature has remained from Modern Warfare. You still see your mate's name tags from here to Kuala Lumpur. So if you see a vague figure at the edge of your screen, surely it must be your friend for he has a blue dot above his head. No, it's XX Sniper ZXX, an enemy, and the blue dot belonged to some guy 50 meters away. Amazing mechanics. The movement is not too bad. It feels slower than Modern Warfare for sure, but not in a bad way. The weapons feel heavy enough, the mouse is smooth, and I usually get where I want to be in a way that I like. The devs got rid of slide cancel and reintroduced dolphin dives, which look hilarious and are not very useful in my opinion. Not only useless, but also fucking annoying is the grabbing feature. You now just don't climb up a ledge, no, you grab it and hang there like an idiot and need to press jump again to fully climb to the ledge. You can't strafe left, you can't strafe right. Was it done because it's useful in Warzone? Or was it done so you need more time to climb ledges, which gives the camper waiting up there more time to react? Oh, who knows? Uh, maybe it's just me, but it feels like the game is pandering towards shitty players with even shittier playstyles because the publishers know that they're usually kids and teens hiding behind those playstyles with their parents' credit card in hand. I don't think I need to tell you that skill-based matchmaking is real in Modern Warfare 1 and 2 and that it has ruined any fun that I could have had in these games. The first games I played in the beta felt really good, like the good old times. People were moving, it was fast-paced and intense, but still pleasant. As soon as SBMM kicked, I got paired with good players whose only strat seemed to be to camp in every idiotic spot they could find. I'm not one to expect others to suffer like I did when I started Call of Duty back then and got my face stomped in by semi-pros on some weird servers. Making the start easier for new players isn't a bad thing. But while I try to not be too conspiratorial here, just let me say this. Activision has filled patents that alter matchmaking to promote sales of in-game purchases in a non-specified way. There have been accusations of the game meddling with people's aim or aim assist, and there are some people that, while having the same ping as others, just take so many bullets more to kill. Weird, huh? Make up your own mind about this, but Activision's approach to matchmaking is not a long-term solution for motivated players. Though I have the slight fear that they are not out to long-term motivate players, but rather milk the cow until it's dead. You know, 
if the game was only promoting camping, or if it only had skill-based matchmaking, but fairer gunplay, or if it only had shitty maps, I wouldn't mind. I'd grind my teeth and probably die of an aneurysm at 40, but that's the Call of Duty life. But Modern Warfare, Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare 2, I haven't played Vanguard yet, seem to not only fully embrace one of these issues, but rather combine them all to one mediocre to shitty experience. If it was my decision to make, I'd of of course offer the people the playstyles they want. If they want to camp, they can camp, even if I don't like it. If they want to run, let them run. But there need to be ways to counter each style, to define and perfect your own, and there needs to be a learning curve, as bitter as it might be for starters. Believe it or not, there should also be some kind of slight skill-based matchmaking. I don't want to fight level 1 players when I'm level 80 and they don't want to fight me. But the fact that I regularly play against people with pings over 160 milliseconds just shows that there is close to no connection-based approach to matchmaking anymore. And that has to change. If that means that level 20 has to fight level 60 and the occasional prestige master storms on a level 2, so be it. That's life. But in its current state, I don't see myself returning to Call of Duty anytime soon. It was a wild ride and a heap of fun, but I'm out. Thank you.